Welcome to CivilNet. We are in Stepanakert, the capital of Artsakh, and we are joined by David Babayan, the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Artsakh. Thank you for joining us, Mr. Babayan. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, since the end of the war of 2020, I guess that you must have a lot of work to do and you have many tasks to solve. Uh, so my question is, what are the most urgent tasks that you have to tackle or that are tackled uh, for the Republic? First of all, welcome to Artsakh. Of course, we are in a very peculiar situation because this war was a devastating one. And uh, now we have a totally different situation. We have different Artsakh. Uh, of course, there are some traditional tasks which we have to carry out, and there are also some new ones because any kind of war, any kind of ordeal changes the agenda, uh, influences strategic and tactical you know, uh, imperatives. Consequently, we have to indeed carry out a lot of work. And uh, here uh, we have to be guided by two main principles. First of all, it's professionalism, uh, and second is uh, patriotism. Because these two principles are key to overcome these kind of difficulties. When we are talking about professionalism, uh, it should be understood that only people who have very high professional skills can manage effective realization of different tasks. On the other hand, we need also patriots. Patriotism is not nationalism. We have to be, to be very clear in distinguishing these two categories. But in order to stay in Artsakh in this situation, in order to bind your fate to this land, uh, you have to be patriot. You have to be a person who has strong value and belief system. This is why uh, the tasks, these tasks are, are very, indeed, very difficult, but uh, they are very much possible to carry out. Of course, one of the most important one is to uh, maintain a high level of security, because it's a guarantee of uh, the Artsakh's revival. Uh, in foreign policy field, uh, we have of course, we have to continue, uh, you know, our traditional direction, some of them. In particular, we have to do everything possible to uh, achieve peaceful settlement and final settlement of the conflict, even though it's a very timely and uh, very difficult uh, problem. We have to do uh, a lot of work. It's a time-consuming. Uh, direction. Second uh, is to develop bilateral ties with different countries and their administrative units. Uh, one of the key components of our foreign policy has been international recognition of Artsakh. Uh, and now one of the crucial points and tasks which are not only a foreign policy priority, but also one of the uh, cornerstones of our state building process is to preserve Artsakh as a geopolitical player, uh, Artsakh as a subject of geopolitics. This is very important because all other tasks and their effective realization are derivative from this, you know, very uh, this very important and crucial imperative. And uh, we have to do uh, corresponding work in this direction. We don't have any other alternative. Otherwise, we are not going to keep to uh, revive our country. You talked about uh, international ties. Um, Artsakh as a republic is not recognized as a republic. How, how in terms of diplomacy, do you plan to uh, ensure diplomatic ties, international ties? 
Well, uh, first of all, the new situation also demands some tactical changes. Now we have elaborated the following formula. Low profile, high efficiency. We don't have to make PRs, advertisements, I don't know, cry or whatever, shout about our problems. Uh, we have to be very cold-minded, uh, you know, very calm. Again, low profile and organize our work uh, in a more coordinative manner. Uh, elaborate all the projects uh, to have a detailed elaboration and uh, just be very much task oriented and result oriented, not process oriented. We have uh, different, uh, you know, um, abilities to do that and different ways. But one of the key factors, of course, to uh, develop ties with uh, the countries where we have a uh, strong Armenian diaspora and not, uh, you know, restrict ourselves uh, only to uh, establish political ties because it shouldn't be a fixed idea, international recognition. It's important, but it's not something fixed. So uh, it's, a, it's a key task, but uh, we have to be very patient we have to be uh, to to have uh, minimum emotions and uh, maximum productivity. Um, let's talk about the Foreign Affairs Ministry of Armenia. Aray Vazian was um, appointed new Minister of Foreign Affairs um, of Armenia, uh, and he has stated that your two ministers should work together with more effectiveness. Um, what does that imply? Uh, First of all, I would like to say that we have a very uh, close ties with Minister Ivazian and uh, Armenian Foreign Ministry. And I think that it's a, it's a very important thing to do in the future too, because uh, we have to cooperate our work. Uh, again, it's low profile, high efficiency. I don't want to open all the breakets, you know. We have to just work and carry out our activities and materialize our tasks. Uh, many times Armenia's MFA uh, has been criticized for its lack of diplomacy throughout time and some also say that if Armenian diplomacy was strong we would have been able to avoid the war or at least to stop it sooner. What do you think about that? Do you think there is a lack of diplomacy, uh, experience in diplomacy? Well, when we are talking about the possibility of avoiding the war or other outcome, uh, I, uh, several times I commented that issue. I think that, yes, there was a possibility to avoid the war. Moreover, there was a possibility to win. But, you know, it's already a subjective mood. I don't want to start, uh, you know, speculate now because it's it's already late too late to talk what could happen or whatever uh, i am also confident that uh, we we haven't lost to azerbaijan and turkey we were defeated by ourselves it was defeated by we were defeated by the the so to say bad traits of our national character, lack of professionalism, lack of patriotism, uh, egoism, lack of or, or low level of faith, etc., etc. In general, you know that in diplomacy, in foreign policy, it is frequently reiterated that there are no permanent um, enemies or friends. But I, I do think that there are permanent enemies and permanent friends. Among enemies are these kind of categories. A lack of patriotism again, a lack of professionalism. So it's important to realize, to comprehend what happened. If we can make lessons, then we can overcome all the difficulties and all these you know, terrible uh, consequences of this war.
But do you think there is a change now in the way in the process, the working process now, compared to uh, what happened during the war and before the war? Do you think there is a process, uh, a, a certain result, or this is something that we comprehend and we are in the path to change? It will take time, but uh, we must do that. You see, because uh, indeed it's, it's a new challenge. Uh, th there are possibilities to overcome this. Again, we have been defeated by ourselves. And uh, we have to just indeed have this kind of uh, positive thinking. Uh, uh, maintain and keep our faith unshakable. Be optimistic, but also realists. This is why now uh, everybody should be a diplomat, not only, uh, you know, uh, workers of the foreign ministry, but we have to uh, apply all our skills to take out our country from this kind of situation because it's a it's a historical challenge. Uh, our generation and not only our generation, people who are living now, um, they have to carry out this mission. We don't have the right. Uh, to abandon or to surrender. This is why we have to, to be strong. Um, as a consequence of the war, um, Artsakh lost not only the territories that had become under its control during the war of 1992-1994, but also territories that were part of the Nagorno-Karabakh autonomous region. Uh, how do you define Karabakh's territorial integrity and uh, how do you see the restoration of that territorial integrity? You see, it's a, it's a very serious problem. Why? Because here we have a uh, very peculiar situation. Well, actually, till now, uh, there is no concept of what is Karabakh and what is Artsakh. You see, every country uh, in its history, especially politically, has to define its heritage. Uh, let's say Azerbaijan claims that it's a, uh, it's a hair of Azerbaijan Democratic Republic, Soviet Azerbaijan, Sefevit Iran, I don't know, other, some other countries, um, which were historically, especially before the formation of Soviet of Azerbaijani Democratic Republic, do, uh, doesn't have any. Uh, th they don't have any relations with Azer Azer Azerbaijani people present day, but they claim to be descendants of these state formations. Let's say the Kazilbash Iran or the Safavid Iran, uh, the uh, Atabek state, etc., uh, etc. Et but till now we we haven't. Um, formulated this kind of uh, idea. What is Artsakh? I mean, is it historical provinces of Artsakh and Utik of Great Armenia? Is it, is it the descendant of Karabakh Khanate, which I personally consider to be an Armenian state formation? Because these state formations are, they differ, their borders are different. Karabakh uh, historical Karabakh incorporates much of, let's say, especially the southern part and central part of Artsakh, Utik, Paitak, some parts of Paitakaran, Sunik. On the other hand, northern Artsakh is not part of Karabakh, you see? So we have such kind of things. This is why it's a uh, serious problem, because it, it hasn't been defined even for ourselves. There is also the Nagorno Karabakh autonomous region. Uh, as I mentioned, which is one uh, fifth of historical Karabakh, one third of historical Artsakh, you see. There is Nagorno Karabakh Republic of 1991, together with Shaoman and Getashin. And there is Nagorno Karabakh Republic or Artsakh Republic from 1994 till 2020. Now we have to define, but I think that it's a, now it's a very urgent thing to define what we consider uh, to be the basis of Artsakh or Karabakh statehood. 
And uh, when we are talking about territories, again, I am, uh, I mean, it, it, uh, the patriots and professionals uh, should be, sh we, we should calculate a lot of things. It's not a, you know, party where we are going to say toasts and cry about what we want. It's a real politic, which is like a jungle. We have to be very smart. We have to be very cautious. Otherwise, uh, any statement will only hurt. This is why, of course, we have, we have to define and the occupation is one of the most important things which we have to carry out. Uh, but we have to elaborate a proper strategy and tactics to do that. And, of course, we have to keep in mind that it's, it will be not a very short time task. It will take a lot of time. When you say the occupation of which territories, you mean? This is why we have to define what is Artsakh and what is Karabakh, what is the basis of our, of our statehood. Of course, the territories which made part of the Artsakh Republic at all the periods of its existence. But we also have to define some other, uh, you know, historical and political and uh, legal aspects too. Um, let's go to another subject, another topic. On December 2, you were the advisor to the President on Foreign Relations. And there was a discussion about, uh, about Russian being uh, potentially the second official language in Artsakh. And back then you said that this will not happen. But uh, now uh, this topic is on the agenda. Um, so I wanted to ask you if it's adopted, what will happen next for Artsakh? How will it affect Artsakh? Because there are some people who say that Artsakh, if it is accepted, if it becomes a second official language, then Artsakh will eventually become a fiefdom of Russia or a satellite statelet. What is your position? Well, first of all, I didn't say uh, that it, will, it would never happen. I said at that time, these kind of issues were not on the agenda, and it was true. Uh, as to adopting it as a second language, or not a state, but maybe some um, official maybe, or whatever, I don't think that there is a threat to our existence or national identity, if we would adopt that. Why? Because, uh, first of all, we have to be very realistic. And uh, we have to, to have sober mind, you see, uh, being drunk with uh, some of, uh, I don't know, um, quasi-patriotic or nationalistic ideas is not acceptable. Uh, first of all, we have, uh, Russia is uh, uh, home to, to the largest Armenian diaspora in the world. More than three million Armenians live in Russia. All of them speak Russian. Among the three million Armenians, around one million people uh, are uh, from Artsakh by origin, you know, or uh, you know, their parents uh, were born in Artsakh. So we have to keep close contact with our diaspora. If they don't know on the proper level Armenian language. And, but they do want to be engaged in state building and rehabilitation of Artsakh. I think that uh, giving some status to Russian language will only help this process. But what about English in this case? Uh, well, English, English uh, is also a very important language. And in all our schools, it, it, uh, it has been taught for years. Uh, but the uh, bulk of Artsakh Armenian diaspora is in Russia, more, more than one million people. And you see when genocide and pogroms in Azerbaijan uh, started in 1988-1990, thousands, maybe tens of thousands of people of Armenian origin came to Artsakh. But because of the language issue, 
most of them left. Uh, besides, let us analyze the history of Nagorno-Karabakh under, uh, let's say, Russian or Soviet rule. Uh, the region became part of Russia de facto on uh, 1805, officially in 1828. But there was no Russification in Artsakh. In Soviet times, uh, we had, for example, 12 schools in Stepanakert, only two were Russians, Russian schools. So, do you think that Stepanakert was a Russian town? No, we maintained our Armenian consciousness. Even more, Artsakh was the cradle of Armenian national liberation movement. This is why it's not a threat. Maybe a lot of people uh, now are doubting what happened, or some of them are speculating, but I don't see any threat in this process. Besides, uh, some, let's say, key figures of Armenian culture, literature, military, history, let's say, Hovanes Tumanyan, Drastamat Kanayan, uh, Viktor Hambartsumyan, Charents, Shiraz, Parush Sevak, Marshal Bagramyan, all of them had Russian education. So what? Well, when you hear uh, some people talking here about uh, this idea, they say that uh, the generation, the new generation, um, might um, see the Armenian language uh, uh, making a step backward and having the Russian having a step forward and then their mother tongue, which is Armenian, might um, not degrade but at least decrease, the level might decrease for the benefit of Russian. I think it's speculation. Suppose how many teachers who have to educate, to have, let's say, a complete Russian language school system here. How many? Thousands of them. In what period of time? I think it's not real. But the Russian language will only help. Besides, we have to be realists and we have to, again, um, have very kind of low level of emotions, more cold-minded and uh, calculation approach. This is why it's uh, already time to give up speculations, to uh, trust people who are professionals and patriots. Otherwise, we will see maybe final catastrophe. Um, in terms of humanitarian issues, um, uh, how international organization can be more involved in uh, Artsakh? Because we know that we have the problem with the prisoners of war, uh, with the displaced people. Uh, how can this international organization be more involved here? Well, uh, we welcome very much any international organizations, especially UN, UNESCO and other specialized, specialized organizations. So they, they can come here, you know, establish contacts with appropriate state structures and start operating. Uh, because humanitarian assistance is uh, very important, that it's a crucial issue in the rehabilitation of Artsakh as an entity and its people. So uh, we very much, uh, you know, consider this issue to be one of the most important tasks. If they are ready, we are ready always to receive them here. And uh, last question. The Republic of Armenia is currently in a political crisis as um, following the defeat of the Artsakh war as 17 opposition parties are demanding, are um, organizing rallies and they are demanding uh, Prime Minister Nikol Pashinyan's resignation. Um, these political crises, does it have any 
uh, consequence or any impact on the interna internal affairs of Artsakh? Well, I think uh, not so much. Uh, but we are very much interested in, in stabilization uh, of internal situation in Armenia. We uh, actually, it's a kind of a dream to have professional and patriotic leadership as something ideal. Of course, it's very difficult sometimes to make it real, but we have to always strive to to, to do that. Always, uh, you know, try to achieve that ideal. This is why we we want everything to come round peacefully and maybe pray for that. Thank you, Mr. Babayan, for this talk. Thank you. Thank you for watching and continue to follow CivilNet.